what's up guys it's still in here with hypnotic hook we're back at it again so had a lot of fun on my last kayak adventure absolutely killed it so it had me looking for more uh, kayak put in spots around the area i think it's little blue river here but uh I was waiting for security to let me in at one of my jobs, so I sat there for a while, and there was a stream that ran through there, so I just started following it, following it, following it, following it, and I saw a place on Google Maps that kind of looked like it was a put-in spot. So, uh, crazy enough, I got home from work last night about 4 a.m. At 3.30 a.m., this place is on my way home from work, so I stopped in, pulled my car down here, shined my headlights down here. Well, at 3.30, I was down here looking, and here I am back here at 10. I had some prior commitments this morning. I had to take my dogs to the groomer. But now we're free. This put-in spot here is very muddy. So I'm going to be honest. I don't really know how I'm supposed to get out of here if I put in right here. I might go look and see if I can slide down over on this side somewhere. Because this is probably from flooding. But, I mean, this is very wet. Even if I do get back up there, the chances of me being able to pull my kayak and not hurt myself is very slim so we just have this set here i'm gonna go over here and take a peek over here and see oh yeah this actually looks a lot better on this side but i've never been here and this seems to stretch on for miles so it's really i got to be careful where i'm at because i only have a missouri fishing license and this is right off a of state road or state line road and state line spans the, it's the border for uh, missouri and kansas so I gotta be cautious of where I'm at just because of that regulation there. So, so there's the truck right there. This is a lot easier of a spot to put in. I see quite a bit of little fish in here. The water is very clear, so that's nice. I have my drone today, so I'm gonna put it up in the air and I'm gonna go explore for a little bit before I actually delve into the water here, so. I know in my previous video, I caught a freaking Mondo bass. And this thing was like clicking and squeaking, so I have some premium food grade silicone here that I had in my box from work. We're just going to go ahead and put a little bit of that in there. Put some in the top here. Okay, that should be good. And also while I have this off here, I'm going to go ahead and retie this from also catching that Mondo bass. You can see the line's kind of perforated and not very good. We're just going to go ahead and retie. No bad line around here. I'm still going to stick with this crawdad and a spoon. I just need to get a, I'm going to go fly the drone. I need to get a gauge of how deep the water is and what it looks like and how far I can go. Back in one of my my first video of taking the kayak out, I saw a ton of, I guess they're carp. I'm imagining they're carp. Uh, I've been seeing them come up beside me in packs of like five or 10 and they've been sucking up leaves and stuff off the surface. I think I just missed a bite. This thing actually looks really good. The golden, uh, golden orange coming through the water I can see because the sun's hitting it just right I mean it's just like a radar beacon like a lighthouse underneath the water
Yeah, I'm kind of curious to see how far I can go up and around here just because the I tried to fly the drone overhead and it started cutting out. Oh, there it is. First fish on with the spoon. Nothing real crazy, but first river fish. Well, GoPro, it looks like this is the place where we uh, have to hoof it. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a gar that just surfaced right there. He's big too. He's kind of like caught in between these poles. He's in between where the water's running down through here and there's a little waterfall on either side. So he's kind of just stuck in this little pole. So it's actually really interesting. I don't even know if there's any bass in this deal here, but I do see a lot of gar and uh, sucker fish. I've tied on a couple of different things that, oh, there's a bass. Oh my, that was a nice sized bass. Well, I found a jerk bait that works for gar. The problem is this is four pound test. I don't have a steel leader and they have teeth. So that one just grabbed onto it real gentle. There's another one. No! I really don't know how I'm going to get these guys up here. Oh, yeah. See, I know I wasn't ready to give up. Ugh. Where'd that go? Uh, I think the problem is I didn't set it hard enough. I saw it just kind of casually come to me and I saw him hit it the last second. My drag was pretty loose. When I tried to set it there, it just went zzzz. And then I bet when it had the slack, he just popped it. He's probably not going to do that again. Whoa. Look at this a nice little jumping bass here. I just kind of came closer to the shade over here. There goes my pole. Get my little chair strap. Dismisses. I was reeling this guy in. He straight jumped clean up out of the water. Another one. Guess I'm just going to work this. I was not successful in my endeavors getting out of the kayak and fishing that little area up there. Oh well, not the end of the world. The, that was the first catch on the little Clio. I lost this one at the last lake that I was fishing at and I went and bought another one. So, First kill on the board, let's go. The depth here is four foot three. And it says the water temperature is 90 degrees. It says 91.2. That's hot. <laughs> I had my lunch and stuff down in the well in the back and I was like, yeah, it'll be a good time. I came back out in the kayak sitting in the sun. My water is super hot. There's a nice fish. My uh, water's super hot and I pulled out my little snack here and it's also very hot. What is this? Hello? First of a new species, what is this? I'm gonna be honest, I don't even know what this is. It's big. His mouth was so small, every time the hook would roll around, it was hit me in the pump. What is this? Huh. I have no idea what that was. 
first strike on the little Clio. That's pretty cool. I'll have to go home and see what that was. I will say this bluff side is a little bit cooler. It says 83 degrees and four foot, about five foot. I'm gonna come back up here. I'm gonna hit this sh again. It was kind of cool because that fish was kind of flat. So after he was done trying to pull me around, when he would come back up, he was like slicing the water because he was so flat and uh, wide. That was weird. <laughs> like dragging a piece of paper through the water so he kind of was just hanging out i tried to grab him by the sides but he was so slippery i couldn't even get a hold of him so how cool is that little cleo got a new species new bait new species how awesome is that oh there it is fish on whoa fish off Try that again. I really don't know what that was. There are some things in here, some creatures just lurking in the shadows. So it's kind of funny how aggressive these gar are because I just watched that happen in real time there. I uh, went over with my line and it, it made him kick his tail and it spun the bait up next to him and he goes, how, 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 and he tried to bite it like three different times. Fish on. This one's fighting pretty good. It's either what I another one of what I just caught or a little bit bigger bass. Oh, it's a gar. What am I supposed to do about that big old guy? Whoa. He's looking for a snag or something. Don't take my Cleo. Yeah, look at this thing. Oh, I got it back. Whoa! I'm gonna count that as a catch. I got him up to my vessel and his mouth was wide open. How cool is that? I do know what that is. That is a big old gar. I really didn't think I'd be having that great of luck because of the time of day and whatever else but I guess since this area doesn't get very much action it seems like everything likes this Cleo little Cleo hello hey the dogs are done okay okay love you bye love you bye well you heard that that might be my wrap-up call Yeah, that's definitely my wrap-up call. They just said uh, they close at 4 and it's 3.15 and I'm about 20 minutes away, so... Hey guys, thanks for sticking to the end of my video. This was a crazy, uh, this was a crazy kayak trip for me for sure. It's not very often that I catch new species, and I got two back to back, which is crazy. I uh, kind of pondered on it for a little bit, and then I kind of remember a conversation. My cousin sent me a picture of a mess of drum that he got here a while back, and he showed me that they have these little pearls that are pretty special and kind of valuable. Never caught freshwater drum before, so that's pretty cool. So as I when I got home, I was kind of looking at some cool facts about them that I want to share with you guys. So Drum's preferred food source is from the shell cracker. That's kind of the subcategory that they're in because they like crayfish, insect larvae, and, and mussels. Uh, another cool thing about them is that they have a muscle that vibrates against their swim bladder that produces a thundering or drumming sound. That's how they got their name. So I think I might have heard it in the video. I'm not for sure. I'll play it back right here. What is this? 
And the other cool species that I caught was that long nose gar, and there were there were tons of them. There's probably a hundred plus that I seen in there. I thought long nose gar were kind of invasive to Missouri, but it said that they're pretty commonly found in rivers and lakes in Missouri, so must not be. Earlier in the video, I, that first one that I came up on after I had to get off my kayak, he was just swimming around in a real low area. And as I was looking around about cool facts for him that they actually can survive in little to no water because of how their air bladder works. So that's pretty interesting. Um, long nose gar are very carnivorous. They are big bullies. They will eat anything. Uh, like you saw in the video, I got a lot of enticing bites by throwing and hitting them with lures, dragging them on top of them, and then just reaction strikes repeatedly. Um, they are very armored. They're pretty close to a pangolin. I'll put a picture of one of them right here. Um, they have very large and very tough scales. The pag pangolin, they're pretty close to the armadillo of fish. They're pretty hard to kill is the general census for what I got from looking around and research. So I did have some problems. I want to share with you guys and I want to show, share with how I'm going to rectify them. Uh, missing the net. The net's kind of a big important thing. It would have helped me land the gar so I could have got a better look at him. But whenever I got him close to the kayak and I seen that mouth wide open with all those teeth, I was like, yeah, I'm not touching that. <laughs> it was long, it was big, and it had big teeth. So triple whammy and I'm out. Second problem I noticed is that my kayak had a ton of water and it. it had like 20, 30 pounds of water in it. And that's not good for a number of reasons, but I noticed it when I was pulling it out of the water. I'm like, man, it feels like somebody's sitting in here. And then we got up, I got it by the truck and I was getting ready to load it back up. I opened the hash and all the stuff I had in there was completely soaked. I had a towel and some swimwear and just some other things just to be extra precautious. And it, it was all soaked and flooded. So the way that I'm going to rectify that is I'm going to fill it up with water and I'm going to try to squeeze and compress it and see if I've damaged the hull in any way to where water is leaking in through it. And there's a pretty easy way to fix that. You can patch it with things. You can get it really hot and then you can just kind of smooth it back together. That might work. I really don't know until I try. So now that we got all that out of the way, I got three tips for you guys. You guys already know if you've been watching what tip number one is going to be. Don't forget the sunscreen. Boy, that sun gets hot when it's beating down directly on you. Tip number two that I would have for you guys, always wear your personal flotation device or life jacket. I have the advantage of having the Garmin so I can always gauge the water depth, but that's not always the safety, the safest precaution. Um, there could be all kinds of underwater hazards. You can get stuck under logs and branches and slip and slide on rocks. It's always just safe just to have it. Um, it's always worth it to spend a little extra money and get a nicer one to where it's more comfortable. Uh, I'm kind of a bigger guy, so the problem that I really only have with mine is that I have to loosen it all the way and then I have to really um, tighten it down around my waist and stuff so it doesn't want to keep coming up and hit me in the chin. So, Tip number three that I would have for you guys, trust your gut. And by that I mean there's a couple different instances that you could see in the video. Um, the first one was that ramp that was covered in mud. I don't know why it was muddy. The bottom was very nice and rock and shoaly and very clear. So I don't know what that mud accumulation was. Even the toughest of kayak adventurers would have had a hard time trying to take it out right there, which that's the only purpose was to put it in right there. I'm really glad that I started to scope around and see that it really wasn't the best area for me to put in at. And it, luckily, it was a nice walk and somebody's already cut a path through the trees where is a better put in spot. Another part that I would add to that is there is usually, usually have like a gut feeling about which side you you should be on. They trust your gut. If you see kind of obstacles sticking out of the water, it's best to avoid them. If you're not really paying attention, you're fishing, not paying attention one way, you can hit, run into one of those very easily on one of your sides and you can capsize or you could lose all your stuff, which that'd be terrible. If the water's deep, you wouldn't be able to touch. You might not be able to recover your stuff. It's just bad all around. So have really good situational awareness or trust your gut. And that's all I have for you guys. Thanks for sticking around. I'm glad you guys got to see me catch some new fish. If you enjoy content like this, I try to post a new video every two weeks. If you guys are in the Kansas City area and got any recommendations, I'm always down for new places. I like to bank fish. I like to kayak fish. You got a boat, let's go out boat fishing. And you get to come and say that, hey, I'm on a YouTube video on the internet. What's cooler than that? So that's all I have for you guys. Thanks for sticking around to the end. And remember, fish after me. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is a huge bass. Oh. Holy freaking god. Oh my god.